reporting and pull up the PowerPoint. There we go. All right. We're going to be going over causality and correlation. Now, we talked about it before, but that's just in general discussion. But several things that we're going to be talking about, um, you need to remember, why does this thing always default to read? Okay. That's What are y'all talking about? Give me a piece of paper and you like them. What? Give me a piece of paper and you rip them. Uh, one, you need to remember that M is equal to delta Y over delta X, which is your slope formula, which is Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over X sub 2 minus X sub 1. And you need to also remember that the point slope equation and all of you should remember this from algebra is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. That's, that's some algebra that you need to remember so you need to write that down. Um, because the slope and the correlation do have an indirect comparison. In other words, they are related. Not by the number, but by just the thinking or the, you know, the, the correlation is positive, the, the slope is positive. The correlation is negative, the slope is negative. That's the relationship that they have. Okay. I went downstairs to get gummy worms and they were out of gummy worms. Oh, and the Walmart. You know, the big bag. No, no, okay. Oh, God. Walgreens, okay. they have this huge bag. It's like 25 yeah, pounds do. of gummy worms. It's best 10 bucks I ever spent. Yeah, it's a $5 bag. Oh, my gosh. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't buy it. I didn't buy it. I had bag. to. I was I, I left it. I did good. But anyway, you know, I always thought in retail, if something sold out, you need to put more. So if one of the little screw things down there runs out, then I thought you were supposed to fill two things up. And then when that stops selling, then you look for another one that sells out. I don't understand how people do retail nowadays. They only buy more if they're actually really running out of everything. So you're not going to get them for maybe another couple of days. Yeah. Well, I might as well go buy that five pound bag. <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to come out with the octopi five pound bag. You know, those little octopi. Those are good. The octopus gummy. No, go back to sleep. Go back to your pacifier. I ate it all. Oh, yeah, I ate it all. Yeah, my son loves those things. He's out here in the lobby. Oh, that's him. Yeah. I was wondering why somebody so young is in college right now. It's like, yeah, I told him he'd come in here. He said, nah, he's out a lot. He's out there drinking he's a beer. This is the he's drinking a beer, doing drugs, one of the two. What? One both. Both. Yeah, we do that all the time. Right yeah. The ESS comes over every two or three weeks. Anyway, um, you need to be able to read a line. Now, I'm also going to show you how to... Do your calculator as well as the Excel spreadsheet. You're not going to want to do the math on this. Okay? You're not. And I don't show you how to do the math. It's very <coughs> tedious. You know how we did the frequency distribution? And we did the mean and the standard deviation of frequency distribution? It makes that look like cake. All right? You don't want to do the line of regression and the best fit line. You don't want to do it by hand. And just take my word for it. When you see the formula, you're going to know what I'm saying. Now, when you graph a line, it's graphed in terms of X and what? Y. So you need to remember that. All this stuff that you learned back in the day with lines, you need to remember. And those two things right there, you need to remember. Capiche? Wait. What is... Huh? I think it is. I was going to come up in just a minute. Yeah. 
All right, scatter diagram, a scatter plot, scatter diagram, right? Scatter diagram slash scatter plot. It's the same thing. It's where you basically plot the points, but you don't what? You don't draw the line. That's a scatter plot. All right. Now, you're going to be looking for that word relationship. You're going to be looking for a pattern. You're going to be looking for a, a line going up, a line going down, or a constant. Okay. You're going to be looking for those three things. There's a couple of things that you're going to see in these slides that we don't go into in your book. Remember, y'all are not very bright, and the book is saying that you're not very bright, so it's be a very, you know, it's written in crayon. Okay, so I'm being very sarcastic because about this book is it sucks. Okay, I wish they would just do away with this book and let us teach it without a book. But anyway. Here's a set of points. You don't write that down. We're going to pull up some homework problems in just a minute, and I'm going to show you what I want you to be able to do. There is a scatter plot right there. Now, what you're looking for is you're looking for a pattern, or you're looking for a relationship, or you're looking for some kind of a line that you could put in there. Now, it looks like the line is pretty much going to fit those five, six points right in the middle. Okay? And that's called the line of best fit or the line of regression. Okay, we're going to get to that in just a minute also. I'm just giving you a kind of a thing. We're talking about 20% of your test here. Okay, so if I give you 20 questions on the test, mathematics questions, you're talking about what? Two or three questions from 4.1, 4.2, or in your case, has anybody seen where correlation is in your book yet? Look up correlation causality. Look to see if it's in there anywhere. I know it's in there somewhere. And you said something about chapters. Seven, chapter 7 is where this unit is. Look in chapter 7 or look in the index and see if you can find correlation and causation. Anybody got an index? Y'all know that's the thing in the back, don't you? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I think right now it's just probability, dependence, dependence. What did you say? Correlation and causality. Look up the C's. Correlation and causality. You just tell me what's, what chapter is in. Because I'm going to teach it to y'all anyway because you need to know it. It might be better if you just look up the index. Because this book is so screwed up. It'll probably be in chapter 1. It needs to be in chapter 7, but I doubt it's in chapter 7. What chapter is that? Five. See? Oh, okay. You're in chapter 7. It's supposed to be in chapter 7, but they put it in chapter 5. What what page? 354. All right, write down 354 if you want to follow along in your book. Okay? But I might put it, I might, or I, I can't remember if I put it on the test, but you still need to know it. Not And it's not a lot of information, but it's just a little bit of information that you need to know in case you ever get a standardized test question, whether it be in a nursing uh, exam or whether it be ACT or whether it be an entry exam, you need to know what regression, you need to know what causality and correlation is, okay? That's your scatter plot. All right, I want you to draw, you don't have to draw the dots, but I want you to draw A, B is in Bravo, and E is in Echo. Alpha, Bravo, and Echo. Make sure you, you don't have to draw the dots. Just draw a line going up, a line going down, and a line going across. This is where you have the relationship of slope. All right? Take a handy-dandy pen. Here is your positive slope. And positive slope means positive what? Correlation. Correlation. Here you have a negative slope. And that means negative what? Correlation. Here you have zero slope. And zero slope means what? No correlation. So this is where you see the relationship between slope and correlation. And that's with negative and positive. So make sure you know that, because if I was to throw a question on the test about correlation, it would be that type of question right there. That's your first 
question right there that you could get. And I just show you a picture and you would just put negative, positive, or no correlation. So that M is like the mu symbol for slope? For the no slope? M. Y is equal to M S plus B. M. Mu has a long tail on it. Okay, well that's not it. Okay. Everybody got it? There's R. That's why you don't want to fool with it. It's very tedious. Okay? And, yeah, the N minus 1 is easy. But when you take all the X's and you subtract them and then you have to, it's just a pain. Okay? So I don't, I don't tell people to do it. Just write down R squared and R. R is the square root of R squared, of course. If you have R squared, your calculator will give you both, I think. The Excel spreadsheet will only give you R squared, and you have to take the square root. Okay? R is between negative 1 and 1. Write that and write that down. You don't have to write this formula down. But just write down R is between 0 and 1. I mean, negative 1 and 1. So, if I give you, a, uh, if, I, if you come up with a negative 0.94, that means you have a negative correlation. And it's very strong. Now, we're going to talk about correlation in just a second. But, if you have a 1, if you have a 0.94, that's a very strong positive correlation. And if you have a 0, or around 0, that means there's hardly any, what? Correlation. So, that's, this is important right here. That's the test question, you know. Where is R? R is between negative 1 and 1. There we go. There it is right there. Here is some good test questions. You can just draw a line. You don't have to draw the dots. And it's just talking about how strong a correlation is. If you have something at about a 45 degree angle, like that, 45 degree angles is a very strong, anything around 45 degrees is pretty strong, like that. When it starts to kind of, kind of level out, that's when it starts to get a little bit weaker. And then, of course, it gets to what? I don't hear this. What does it get to when it levels out? That's no correlation. And then, of course, you have, I saw that, that was a yawn. I saw that. There's your negative correlation, and then a little slight negative correlation. You see the steepness changes a little bit. So you either have a strong, a semi-strong, or a moderate, and then you've got a strong negative or a moderate negative, and then no correlation. And you'll see the easy way to tell this. You should be able to be able to see it, you know, like that with the very obvious graphs, but there's some that are very difficult. That's where the Excel spreadsheet and the calculator comes in handy. There's a positive correlation. There's your calculation by hand. You don't have to write it down. But that's why I don't suggest it, because it can be very tedious. And that's why I kind of, as far as, and, and now, People don't do it by hand anymore. They don't. And you get past a certain point to where you need to leave the by hand, you know, leave it back and use your calculator. And this is one of those times. I don't suggest that you do all of that. That's just, to me, a lot of busy work. And plus, if you were a mathematician, it'd be different. If you were learning how to process math and how to teach math, it would be different. But you're not learning that in here. You're learning what does it mean? What does, what does the regression line mean? That's all you need to know for a presenter standpoint and a presentee standpoint being presented to. You need to know that's what an introduction is called. So you're familiar with the material. And I'm not going through that. Okay. Now let's talk about correlation. And we've talked about that before. And then we'll get to 4.2.
Okay, correlation. And we've talked about this a little bit with the Nicholas Cage movies. Um, you can have a correlation, but correlation does not mean what? Causality. Correlation does not equal causation. All right, I was given an a, a, a example in the 120 class this morning. Causality is basically if I fertilize a pasture of mine, and one of my pastures that I fertilize has got a slant downhill. And along the creek, because whenever you have downhill, you usually have a wash or a creek. Okay, Right beside the creek, I have these big old gigantic trees. All right, and they're growing faster than the other side of the creek. One side of the creek, this side of the creek, it's got small trees, about three foot tall, and this side of the creek has huge trees, about ten feet tall. And the reason that is is because of what? The fertilizer is washing downhill to this side of the creek. It's not washing to the other side of the creek. So that's why you have causality. A lot of fertilizer being applied to this pasture, but you also have big trees down on this side of the creek. That's causality. One causes what? The other. Cause and effect. I drink too much wine. I have to pee. Okay? You drink too much water, wine, beer, whatever. You have to go to the bathroom more. Okay? I know it's not the best, but it's the best as far as correlation. Cause and effect. If one causes the other, then you have causation. Okay? One causes the other. So you might want to put a definition... One causes the other. That's causality. Correlation is basically you see a what? You see a relationship or you see a pattern in the graph or you see a pattern or a relationship in the data. You see a tendency. You can call it a tendency. You can call it a pattern. You can call it a relationship. Whatever you want to call it. But if you see a pattern, does that necessarily mean that something caused something else? Well, like I told you before, I could go to Amstar and say I want to pull the Nicolas Cage movies for the last week and the sales and the blah, blah, blah. And then, okay, it looks like that. Okay, and then I pull, go to AmMed, and I pull, how do you spell AmMed? I don't know why we can't spell it like Anderson Hospital. I don't know why we got to call it AmMed. Anyway, AmMed, and I find the suicide rate for that same week that I did. Let's see, what is this? Uh, what's this week? Um, what's today? The first 10-1 to 10-7. Okay. And then I do the same graph, or I graph the material from 10.1 to 10.7 from the suicide rates, and I get about the same graph. Does that mean that one causes the other? No. Even though sometimes Nicolas Cage is out there, that does not mean he causes what? Suicide. All right? So I can show you a correlation but does not mean that it causes the other. Another example, and this is another good example that you're going to see on standardized tests. Weight of a car versus what? Gas mileage. Gas mileage. The heavier the car, the less the what? The less the gas mileage. All right? That's a good example, and it's something that you might see on a standardized test. Now, look what it says right here. Find the least squares regression line. This one is the one that's even more math. It's even more math than the R factor, okay? No, we're not going to do that. It's also called best what? Best fit, okay? Line of best fit. The reason you want to get a line of best fit is because sometimes you can't fit a square peg in a what? A round hole. And sometimes you can't get the data to fit to where you can predict what happens in the future, okay? Especially in business. All right. So what you do is you take all the points that's scattered all over the place and you find a line that's the best fit between all of them. 
Now, I don't even want to show you the, the, the math behind it, but I'll show you at least this much. You have a, you have a bunch of points. And I'm just going to use four points. There's one point, there's two points, there's three points, there's four points. All right, now you can't draw a straight line between those four points because it causes the quadrilateral, okay? So you can't do that. So what you do is you take this blue line and, well, actually, you take the X and Y from each one. That's X sub 1, this is Y sub 1. Whenever you do dots, it does that. I'm sorry. You take that point and that point, and that's X sub 2, Y sub 2. And then you take this, this right here, that's x of 3, 3, and you don't have to write this down. This is y sub 3, and then this is x of 4, and y sub 4. Everybody get that? All right. And you take all those distances, and you figure out where the points are, and I'll do them in red, where the points are that fit between the distances of those four points. Let me draw those four points a little bit better because now you can't see them because of the dots. There's one point. There's another point. There's that point. So you got four dots right there and you take a formula and you crunch all the numbers and you find the best distance, the distance between the two points and that gives you four points, okay? Gives you a point, say like right in here. Then it gives you a point right in here. Then it gives you a point right in here and a point right in here. And then you draw what? And then you draw a line, and then that line will do will do the predicting for you for you don't know x of three for 2020. What will happen? And then you can take it over here and get your y sub 5. It's supposed to be 5. There you go. Okay. And that's what, that's what a line of regression is. So use the line of regression. Is it very applicable in real life? Yes. Yes, it is, especially in business. So if you're going into any kind of business or marketing, it's going to be used a good bit. All right? Now, now the sum of the squares, that's what we're doing here. What is this right here? Well, basically, this is slope, okay? You find the slope, x of 1, y sub 1. Drop a line right here. Somebody tell me what we've got right here. What's that called? It's called a triangle. a squared plus b squared is equal to what? c squared, sum of the squares. You take the square root of everything. You find the hypotenuse. That's where this comes from, all right? We're bypassing the math. I'm telling you just to trust me. And just to say, okay, I agree with you, Hubert. We don't need to do that. We don't. All right? Just take for my word. I'm explaining to you the math that we're not going to go over and behind the concept. Concept is to find the best line that fits between those four points. Everybody with me? Okay, that's what we're doing. Because, like I say, you're not going to be a mathematician, or I'm sorry, a statistician, which is a mathematician wannabe. Here is... Some points, they're finding the they're finding the slope and they're finding the y-intercept. You don't have to do that. You can if you want to, uh, but we're going to do it on the calculator. And we're going to do it on the Excel spreadsheet. So just look at it as be happy, okay? And there is another least squares. They do not show you the math on these slides. There's two re there's another reason, there's a reason for that. One is they don't want to confuse you, and the second reason is they don't want to intimidate you. The math behind the least squares regression is very cumbersome. And they're just showing you what they can find. And that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm not going to go over that. I'm not going to go over that. So let's just stop there and get out of the slide. And then I'm going to go to dang old homework. And I'm going to use the 120 homework. We're not going to, you're not going to do any homework questions. We're just going to go over, the, we're just going to do homework during this this class and probably the start of the next class. So you can have four or five 
problems in your notebook. Everybody with me? Okay. So, anyway, let me go back to my handy dandy and pull up homework or chapter contents 4.2 and look in your book and you should find some problems in there if you want to try them. I'm not going to assign any. If I do, I might, well, I might make it up since this is not a polycom and I don't have to do it 15 different times. I might make up Somebody look and see which section these problems are in that I'm fixing to do. Okay? Like, not the exact, okay? Like. So look for this wording in your book. Uh, draw a scatter diagram. Comment on the type of relationship. Just don't worry about all that. Just let's draw it. I'm going to go, I'm going to make it bigger where you can see the points. Hold on just a second. And then we're going to pull up the, so I'm going to make this bigger for y'all so y'all can see the numbers. There, is that good enough for you? All right, I want you to get your calculators out. And I also want you, if you got a calculator or go to something else I want to tell y'all about, it's Wabbit EMU. Those of you that don't know about it, if you got a droid phone, you can go to Wabbit EMU. Go to the uh, go to the play play what do you call it play store or whatever and pull it up and you can download a handy dandy calculator to your phone. If you got one of my phones and you got to go buy it somewhere because everything was iPhones is a scam. But anyway, I'm sorry, my son and daughter has it and I refuse to pay for all their scams on their. You got to pay for this. You got to pay for that. You got to pay for this. And then you have to change phone every month because the daggum phone falls apart. I'm, I'm just very... I'll show you. Okay, so at EMU, you can actually download one of these handy-dandy... I'll show you because we got it on our... We got it here, see? If you'll look... Well, it came up. Oh, see the little wabbit? See, that's the, see the little wabbit there? That's Wabbit EMU. When you go to Wabbit EMU, you're going to see that little symbol. See? Wabbit EMU. And you can pull these phones up on your calculator. I mean, on your... You can pull these phones up on your calculator. You can pull these calculators up on your phone if you have a droid. If you have an iPhone, you have to go look for it. I think you have to pay for it. If you turn your phone sideways, it turns like this. I know, but I don't know if it'll graph. So you got to grab. I'm going to show you how to grab. Um, anyway, I'm going to put in these numbers. So let's go back to the handy dandy and pull up the graph. And I'm going to pull the graph over here. It ain't going to stay over there. Oh, gosh. Really? Okay, there you go. All right. So let's, put, let's plug in our numbers. Go to stat. I think I've already plugged these numbers in. Edit, 0, no, 5 5.1, 5.7, 5.3, 5.2, 5 2, and 2.2. 2. And then we're going to go over to the handy-dandy X coordinates. One, two, three, five, six, six. Everybody with me? Now I've got them here and I've got them here. Make sure everybody gets to that point. If you don't have a calculator, you need to get a calculator either on your phone or you need to get one that will give you this, a TI-84, 83, 84, 85, 86, whatever. All right. Now there's something else I need to tell you. Go to second zero. It should have a catalog right there. Go to second catalog and type in D. Was it D I? No, D. Go to D and go to diagnostic. Whatever. Let me type in D again. There. And go down to diagnostic. And make sure you have diagnostic on. Everybody look at the screen so you can see it. See it right there? 
Hit diagnostic, hit enter, and make sure the diagnostic is on. Everybody did that? Okay, for those of you that have a calculator, make sure you turn the diagnostic on. Now go back and hit stat, calculate, and then go down to number four, linear regression. And go to calculate and write down that information because there is the information you're going to need to find your trend line. Now I'll show you how to graph it in just a minute. Over here, I'm going to highlight these two, and I'm going to go to insert. There's the scatter plot right there. I'm going to click on the one without lines, and I got that point right there. So I've got a, a graph so far, but I don't have a graph on the calculator, so I'm going to do that now. Go to second, y is equal, which above it says stat plot. And I'm going to hit, uh, hit the first one. You can hit four or five of them if you want to, but there's only, you only, you only graph in one. So turn it on, hit enter. And then see the stat plot is defaulted. See the stat plot right there? It's defaulted. And go to L1, L2. It'll automatically read the first two columns. And then hit graph. And there's your graph. So look at that graph and look at this graph. It's the same. You see the same type tendency, okay? All right, so that's how you graph and that's how you stat plot. Now what we're going to do? Well, over here, and that's why this is so much better. The Excel spreadsheet is so much better because one on the homework and the test, you don't have to type in the numbers because you just copy it over to Excel. Right click on dot. Make sure you put this in your notes. Right click on the dot. Go to add trend line. It will default to linear because most of the times that's the one you want. And then you go down to display equation and display R squared. And there's your equation and there's your R squared. And somebody take the square root of 8781, 0.8781. What do you get? What is the square root of 0.8781? Okay, it doesn't take that long. 0.9. Okay, do you need a round to two? 0.9 what? 0.94. 0.94 is good. The correlation coefficient should only be two digits because you're reading it from negative one to one. So thank you for answering, both of y'all. Okay, um, so do we have a correlation? Yes, we do. We have a positive correlation. Now, the slope is negative, but we have a positive correlation, meaning there is a big pattern. There's a good pattern there. All right, and that's how you do it. That's what I want you to be able to do. So let's do it on your calculator now. Now, you take this information with your calculator, and it's like a two-step process. First, you have to go back to linear regression. So go to stat. Go to um, calculate. Sorry, I'm thinking of two things at one time. Go to linear regression. Now, you're going to have to write down this information because you can't carry it over. You're going to have to. All right, so y is equal to negative 0.7372x plus what? 6.69. So you need to write that down because you can't, it's not there. It's not on your calculator like the Excel spreadsheet does it. So you got to go, okay, A is that. So that's negative 7372 plus 6.6927. So now I go to Y is equal and I type in negative 0.7372. X plus 6.6927. And I'm going to make it a dashed line. Hit enter, 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 enter. There we go. And graph. Now, 
Now you might can hit Zoom Stat. Where is Zoom Stat? Zoom Stat is number what? Nine. Hit Enter. There you go. Now notice, is it hitting the two dots at the bottom? No, it's hitting the top one. Is yours over there hitting the top one? Yes. Always compare and make sure that something isn't, you know, missing. And it looks good to me. So I want you to be able to tell me the trend line. I want you to be able to tell me the formula. And I want you to be able to tell me the R. And, and what does it mean? So you would say there is a correlation because your R factor is 94.94. And that's very close to 1. Caprende? All right, let's do a nerd. Let's do one that has a little bit more information. Let's go back to the handy dandy homework. And that was that one. I'm going to pick this one. All right, I want you to do this one. And I'm going to put it on the Excel spreadsheet so you can see it. I want you to do it on your calculator or your Excel spreadsheet, whichever one you have. There's the my, There it is. So if not, put it in your notebook and you can do it at home on the Excel spreadsheet. And this is about the only time I teach you to use the Excel spreadsheet. I mean, it's not real difficult. I mean, you don't even have to type them in. All you have to do is just hit a few buttons. And if you can't do it, just mark it up as failure. Ugh. What classroom is this? Two o what? Thank you. What time is it? Well, we're going to start. I'm going to finish after this one. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these two. And you just got to learn how to highlight with your mouse. Just highlight those two rows. Insert. Go down right here. Here's where the, it say insert scatter. Hit the click on the arrow and pick the one without what? without lines, and then right click on one of the dots, and add trend line, and scroll down and hit display and display. And there's your information. So write that down, what I just told you to do on the Excel spreadsheet. I was to go over again, you highlight, the two rows, the X and the Y, 
You don't highlight the top. I mean, you could if you wanted to. I don't think it'll matter. Insert. And then click. All it does is just put the stuff at the top. That's all it does. It doesn't really change anything. And then right click on one of the dots, add trend line, and display. Go scroll down over here on the right and display, display. And there it is. Now the good thing about Excel is you just have to take that and match it up with the answers on the on the homework or the test. With the calculator, you would have to go in and type it in and graph it. But that's up to you which one you want to use. So this one should be negative 0.00. Somebody take the somebody take the square root of 0 0.8086. What do you get? So is, is 0.9 even? So, okay. 0.9, is that close to 1? Yes. So you have a strong correlation here. Now, again, look at the look at the labels. Is that true? Is there a causality there? Yes. There is causation here because the more your car weighs, the less gas mileage you're going to get. Capiche? So make sure you can do, and we'll do some more Wednesday before we go into our new stuff. So just think of today as a break, and you don't have any homework tonight. Just work on your test. Your test is still due, right? And I think your homework is due tonight, right? I think it's already done. Oh, it's been due. Okay. Well, then work on your test then. Okay? Question. All right. Y'all get out of here. Enjoy your day off. I gave you a little bit of time. What time's class over?